don't need a high-end designer or a lot of money to get a luxe look. Be your own interior designer. This is Affordable Interior Design, the podcast. Here's your host, Betsy Hellman. Hi, everyone. It is great to be back with you again this week. I am here with a guest. I always love having a guest. They provide inspiration. They help me to uh, think about new things in different ways because interior design seems like it's just sort of one topic, but certainly there's so many facets to any industry and the same is true with interior design. So I'm joined here by Justin Breen. Justin and I just met by co- in by coincidence, we are in the same business group, Strategic Coach, and we were put into a breakout session on Zoom, and we just connected. I found him to be so intriguing, so interesting, and I really think he'll have some great things to share with you guys as well. So welcome, Justin. Yeah, this is exciting, Betsy. Um, you know, I'm very honored to be here. Um, our Colby scores, Colby, K-O-L-D-E, you're a 6-7 in the middle, and I'm a 6-7 in the middle, and that's very rare. It's very rare. Um, and, you know, interior design inside a building, I, you know, maybe we can talk about interior design within your brain today. That's the way I look at things. I interior design my mindset, and that's led to uh, designing the network of the highest performing entrepreneurs on the planet, which has created two global companies after having zero business background and, you know, four years ago. So interior designing, whatever it is, it's, it's designing the life you that you want, I think. Well, I think that aspect of your story is so intriguing. Four years ago, you had a totally different life, a totally different vocation. Tell us more about that leap, you know, what you did then, what you're doing now, and why. Well, yeah, thanks. And, um, you know, my understanding is a lot of folks listening to this, they, they're here, if they, if they can see they're here, they want to get to here. They're here. They want to get to here, so that um, uh, you know. I, I don't usually talk about it, but in this case, I will. I wrote an international best-selling book about you know because people are like, wait, you had zero business background four years ago. Now you have two global companies that were top entrepreneurs on the planet. I'm like, well, oh, so here's how here's how that happens. Thirty steps. Um, uh, and I'm just an entrepreneur who happens to be a journalist. I'm not a journalist. Uh, I'm not a PR firm owner. I'm an entrepreneur who happens to be a journalist. And, um, you know, four years ago, I was working full time as a journalist, had my job salary cut in half, couldn't find a job, uh, uh, incorporated uh, in over six weeks, reached out to 5,000 people while I was working full time at half the salary to get my first five clients. So one out of a thousand people said yes, uh, got fifth client, uh, and, uh, resigned the next day. And then Robert Feeder, he's the top media columnist in the Midwest of the United States at a story I'd started my own firm. So that was February 10th, 2017 to June 5th, 2017. So that's entrepreneur life. That's entrepreneur life. Well, and it seems like a perfect time to tell people that you're actually recording in your backyard. You're enjoying this beautiful <laughs> September weather, as I can hear the uh, emergency vehicle. Cicadas, ambulance. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You're living in Chicago. Yeah. And so we had only met via Zoom and you mentioned that, you know, you made this big leap and also that you met your business partner over Zoom and that you hadn't met this person, this person that you're in business with your partner until last week. So, yeah. you know, a lot of people would be really afraid to make such a jump. What no, gives no. you the courage no, no, no. to go to business with someone <laughs> <No>. on Zoom? <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, that's a good question. So, I'm a simplifier, meaning um, I take all this complexity in the world, I just hear blah, 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 and immediately simplify it into patterns, immediately. That's how my brain works. Um, so someone can talk to me for an hour and I'll hear blah, 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 and immediately turn it into a 400 word story or a three or four part pattern. I just, that's how my brain works. And I haven't met one entrepreneur at the highest level. I'm not talking about small businesses. I'm not talking about regular humans. I'm talking about entrepreneurs at the highest level that hasn't overcome at least one of the following four things. Most are two or three, and the all four ones are really successful. So the four things, this is what separates entrepreneurs at the highest level from everyone else. So four things are bankruptcy or potential bankruptcy, two, depression, three, the highest level of anxiety you can imagine, and four, likely and or possible traumatic experiences as a child or young adult. 
So most people use those as excuses their whole life. Entrepreneurs at the highest level, it's entrepreneur life, figure it out. So I'm, I'm three of those four. The all four ones, there's a lot of all four ones in, uh, in Strategic Coach 10X where I'm at and, and in Abundance 360 Summit where I'm at. There's a lot of all four ones. And, um, you know, entrepreneur life, that's, again, just to get my company started, I was rejected 4,995 times to get five new clients. And so when COVID started, when COVID started, I'm like, oh, you know, I posted this on social media at the time. I think at the time I had about 45,000 followers, now I have 50. And I'm like, oh, for people with the right mindset, this will be the greatest opportunity that's ever happened. And that's what's happened. So started a global company, second one with someone I'd never met in person until our big launch party a couple of days ago at Chicago Yacht Club. He's in San Francisco, also in Strategic Coach. We met on Zoom, realized we had the same mindset and we wanted to be a hero to the same people, highest performing entrepreneurs on the planet. And so we just created a second company to do that. Very simple. Now you make it sound simple. Right, but people- well, it is <laughs> for me. It for me, it is. That's what I mean. But so, like, you're a three implementer. Uh, for those who don't, you know, you use your hands and build. I'm a one. So if my sons, my sons are eight and seven. So if they ask me to like tie, I'll tie their shoes or put their bike helmets on or change the light bulb. That's very difficult for me. I can do it, but it almost drains. It drains all my energy immediately. But at this, I just stay in my zone of genius, and that's the whole point. That's the whole point about interior design whether it's in a room or in your head, I just stay in my zone of genius. So for me, this actually is very easy and it's very fun and it's very lucrative and it eliminates things that I don't want to deal with. That's the whole point. I've designed something that, that is my game with my rules. I've designed that. Yeah. Well, and you know, I think people are listening, especially to your story earlier, where you talked about being a journalist, where you talked about getting this major pay cut and you either had to just take it or- Figure it out figure it out. And I think these people yeah. listening, a lot of them are going through the same thing. Maybe they're working in jobs that aren't fulfilling or jobs where, you know, especially during coronavirus, there's no guarantee that's not a safety net anymore. And so they're not the same Colby score as you, and it may be more daunting for them. How would you help somebody who sees a lot of complexity make a leap? What would you say to somebody who can't see a way to their passion or their zone of genius. Yeah, and that's the really interesting thing is because most people, can't, they, can't, um, they can't do, they can't, they can't do this. That's, and that's okay, by the way. You know, there's a statistic um, and, you know, I don't have the article in front of me, but there's many articles. 4% of the population worldwide are entrepreneurs. And when I say entrepreneurs, I mean small business owners, any restaurant owners, and the people that I hang out with, it's, I mean, it might be, you know, two to 3% of the 4%, if that, one out of a thousand. So most people aren't, they're not meant for that. And, and that's great. That's great because, um, because the world needs more integrators to follow through on the visionaries to get stuff done. Now that said, that said, I find that there's no excuses for finding something that you're good at and what you like to do. I, there's, there's, there has to be ways to do that. Um, you know, my wife's a pediatrician. She's not, she is not an entrepreneur. She's not an entrepreneur, but she loves being a pediatrician. And she found a way to do that, going to medical school, whether it's a nurse, whether it's a teacher. Um, the, real, the real tragedy in life and, and I think you, you talked about it already. There's, there's two reasons why people are so miserable that, that I've seen, because I see everything in patterns. One, they're doing something eight to 10 hours a day that they don't like to do and they're not good at. That's really sad. The really, really, really sad part is when they actually find out what they like to do and what they're good at and they don't do anything about it. And for me, that's inexcusable. Whether it's as an employee or as an employer, it's inexcusable. And because it's tragic, it's tragic. And if more people were doing what they like to do and what they were good at, uh, the world overall would be a very happier place. Much and I completely yeah. agree. I mean, I think there is such a loss. You have one precious life. And if you yeah. find what you're wanting to do and you let money or lack of education or any of the other excuses no, no, no. That you can bring into it, no. and some of them are very valid. Like, I definitely 
see the obstacles. I grew up, you know, with a mom and who was single and it was a different era when there weren't yeah. opportunities like there are now. And, and some people mm -hmm. may still feel shackled like that. So now when we do have sort of a different generation where opportunities for online learning or yes. even a more modest entrepreneurship, like a hobby business abound, yes. you can find a way, you should find a way. I think that's what you're saying. Um, mm. That's sort of kind of what you meant. Well, I, I think that's a, I think that's a fair point. And again, that's the four things. So are you going to let those four things, are you going to use those as excuses or are you going to use those as motivation? That's, that's it. I mean, that's what separates people from finding what they're, you know, actually executing and then using those. As so that's another interesting thing. Executing and excuse, excuse are very similar, very similar words in terms of how they sound, but they're totally different. Execute is you get it done, excuse you find a reason why you can't get it done. And also, no you don't all have to be that high level entrepreneur, that one person. Absolutely not. Person. You know, that doesn't necessarily equate to success, which is why I love, you know, interior design. You can do it on the weekends. You can do it, you know, for your neighbor. It doesn't have to be on a high level, like say something like being a pediatrician or a lawyer. You know, you really can carve your own path uh, especially in 100%. the United States where you don't need a license to become an interior designer. So there's so many ways to make an artistic dream come true. What advice would you give someone who is seeing the obstacles, kind of has an inkling of what they want, but doesn't know what to do next? Yeah, I mean... So you, you have affordable interior design and I know you love affordable and you love it. You love it. So that's why, I mean, you just love what you're doing. I, you know, <laughs> I love what I do. Uh, I would do it for free. <laughs> it's not, in fact, I did basically for free for 20 years. <laughs> if you go into journalism, you're not going into journalism to make money. So it's always been about purpose. It's always been about purpose. Um, and, and um, you know, I, to answer your question, there's a good trick. There's a good trick to do um, to find out what you're really good at and what you like to do. And I've done this several times and then I just kept working with higher and higher level people to really simplify it even more. But the first step I did was I wrote 30 things down that I did every day, every day, no matter how trivial. I mean, it could be anything from taking the garbage out to turning my computer on to running anything. And, um, and then those 30 things, I looked at three of them out of 30 that I really like to do and what I was really good at. And I circled them, circled them. And then I made a, a couple sentences out of them, a couple sentences. And then, um, then those sentences, then, then I started sharing that with my friends and, you know, my friends, you know, high level entrepreneur, then they became higher level entrepreneur, then they became higher level entrepreneur and they helped tweak it. And what it is now, what it is now, it's similar to what it was then, but what it is now is, the purpose of my life is to be a connecting superhero for every visionary, abundant investment mindset entrepreneur and share their stories with the world. So besides hanging out with my family and friends, that is 100% of my day. Not 99, not 75, 100%, 100%. And I never get tired of it. It's fun. It's lucrative. It, 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 it's just, I love it. I love it. I'd actually like to know your unique ability or if you're, you're your zone genius. Well, that um, list of 30 you, things was depressing me, Justin. Uh, you know, I was <laughs> on my list of 30 things. I consider myself a relatively high-level entrepreneur. I'm in year 16. Yeah. This week, it's year 16 of business. And so yeah. I feel successful. I have a business that has visibility. I'm doing what I love. And it's really driven by purpose. But yeah. when I think about my 30 things, I think there's only three things on there that I do every day that I actually really like to do. <laughs> and I think, I think I'm still struggling. You know, it sounds like you've probably narrowed that list of 30 things. It sounds like you do maybe 17 things now and you like a lot of them. <laughs> oh no, no, I do. Two, I do one thing. I do the purpose of my life. I do one. What about if the I don't do something? Then, 
Is that on the list? I was thinking like brush my teeth. <laughs> I like to brush my teeth. I like to brush my teeth. I, you know what? We, I don't like walking the dog. I don't like walking. <laughs> That's why you have but a fenced it. backyard, which I can see. I see the dog wandering. Correct. Around. Oh, yeah, fence back here. Yeah. <laughs> but I think but that's interesting. You're talking about every that's interesting. Yeah. When um, I heard right down the 30 things you do every day, I thought about like, you know, I really hate taking a shower. I hate it. <laughs> I, do I like it. it. But I like flossing. <laughs> I don't like brushing. So maybe I got too granular. Maybe we have to limit the 30 things to things you do at work. Let's do that. And it, see, this is fat. This is what I made. So and this answers the question too, um, and maybe you put it in the show notes, the Colby A index, K-O-L-B-E-A index. Um, again, you're a six follow through and a seven quick start. That's very rare in entrepreneur world. Most, most of the really high level entrepreneurs, they're like eight, nine, 10 quick start and one, two or three follow through. So they're ADD diagnosed or undiagnosed and they're all over the place and have to hire a million people to actually do anything, which is great. Those are the people that change the world. And then my brain simplifies it. It simplifies it. And then uh, my top three strength finders are activate, maximize, achieve. So there's no ideation. There's no futuristic. It's just result, 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 result. It's so it's really fascinating collaboration. But, but I strongly recommend everyone taking the Colby A index test. It's 55, it's 55 US dollars and it takes 20 minutes. But it's not your personality. It's how your brain thinks. It's how your brain thinks of things. And, um, and, and, the, and again, most entrepreneurs are, you know, the really good ones are at least a seven, like, you know, they're at least a seven quick. Well, There's definitely, exceptions to that, but. you know, I think my trap and you, you know, a lot more about Colby than I do. Like, I love how you really tap into it. Well, you're a four fact finder and I'm an eight. There's a big difference between yeah. that. The big difference. So yeah. I took the Colby, but I didn't care to like figure out what it meant exactly. How about that? Uh, <laughs> I did. Right. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. But, you know, I think that six, seven combo is a little bit of a trap because sometimes. Hit the gas, pump the brakes. Hit the gas, pump the brakes. Hit the gas, pump the brakes. And then and I'm hit the gas. Right. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, no, no. But you're exactly right. So I'll have the great idea and then I'll know I want to execute it and it'll take me away from more good ideas to execute. It also took me longer to hire people because I could do the things as well or I wanted to yep. do the things as well. Correct. So I would have yep. the idea and do the idea and I slowed myself down. It's why, you know, I feel successful after 16 years, but I was a solopreneur for eight years and- yep. It was really bad news. I think actually 10, and anyway, who cares? Let's, let's not go back in time. Let's only look forward. But because <laughs> I was able to and wanted to do the things, it stopped me from getting more done. Yep. So, um, so this is how my brain works. And um, I hear things and then I'm like, oh, activate, maximize. Okay, so what you just said, I'm like, so here's the here, here's my solution to, cause you and I are very similar. So my first company, I have some freelancers that do some of the stories, but this is so easy for me and so much fun. I do a lot of it myself. Cause why wouldn't I? And it's, it's actually not a struggle. It's actually very easy. Um, but, but with my new company, I couldn't do it. I can't, I can't do it. So all I did was instead of the traditional entrepreneurial route, because I'm a, I'm an outlier of outliers. I didn't hire a million people. All I did was I found a business partner who, virtually, uh, who um, I would describe him as a visionary integrator. He loves all the backstage stuff, doesn't want the spotlight, but he's, an, he's a nine quick start. So <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Um, and he's a one fact finder. I'm an eight, total collaboration. And, and he's a five follow through on the stick and he's a six implementer and I'm a one. So total collaboration. So my point is I couldn't do what my first company with the new one. So I had to have collaboration and that's what I'm doing. And he does all that stuff that I don't want. I'm not doing any of that. And it's a total partnership. It's not an employee employer relationship. It's a hundred percent partnership. And that's why I'm so excited about it because it's just technology for my brain and it'll hundred X, if not a thousand X what I'm already doing. And I have to do zero X to work other than throwing big parties and talking about it, but that's not, <laughs> that's not work. 
that's and part. that's obviously that's something you were good at because I knew all about the party and it looked fabulous. And if I was in Chicago, I would not have missed it. But I think the takeaway here is, you know, if people are sitting here thinking, I wish I was an interior designer or I wish I was following a different path, even if it's not interior yeah. design, the key, Whatever it is. you know, you have found the yin to your yang, the person to do Correct. the thing you don't like to do. And, you know, yeah. the trap for me in creating a business is I would come up with the idea and I kind of like to do a lot of things. So I would make the idea. I came up with the vision of the house and then I would build the house and other yep. people could build it faster than me, better than me. So yep. I think better. much better. So get out of your own much way. Better. Like, you know, Correct. I have an accountant and today I wanted to apply for a grant and there were all these different documents I had to do. And I'm like, I'm just going to pay her to apply for this grant for me. Do it. You know, because <laughs> I could do it. I could slog through all my files. I know how to do this, but I shouldn't be doing this. So if you guys are feeling daunted listening, you know, just do what you like. And the thing that kept me from doing what I like to be totally frank, Justin, is not a need to control everything. It was, I grew up very poor and I felt like I didn't want to spend the resources to pay someone to yeah. do something I could do. I didn't want to do it. I didn't feel I was good at it, but I knew I could go back in the files and find all my tax documents and find all the stuff in the IRS. Yeah. And so I want people to take away that the investment is always worth it and will get you there faster. I built mm -hmm. my own darn house and I didn't, <laughs> This is a metaphor, guys. This is a metaphor. I do not build houses, but I built every idea yeah. I had and it was not a good use of my time and it made me feel burnt out and it made yep. me feel like this wasn't the profession for me because I was like, I got into this to design and I'm doing all this other junk. So I think what Justin is trying to say is find the yin to your yang, even if it means splitting the business with someone, right? As he has done with his new venture, even if it means, you know, paying someone before you've seen the revenue come in because you'll be able to make revenue that much faster. And I had that short view due to my upbringing, but I wish I would have had a different view. I'd be somewhere a little bit further along, I'm sure. Well, so Juan, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, thank you for sharing that. I have, uh, I don't usually say this, but um, you know, I think you'll appreciate it and your audience will appreciate it. So my father died when I was 13. Uh, he was 61 when I was born. So he'd be 105 if he was alive now. And he was a World War II hero. But he, he died when I was 13. And um, and then I have a, my youngest brother died when he was 29 of a drug overdose. He'd be, 40, be 41 now. Um, and uh, I have two other siblings. And they have, not, you know, they, 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 uh, they're good people, but they haven't gone the route that I have. So they either go the route you and I have, or there's another route to go. And I don't, you know, so, so I understand that. I understand. Okay. And again, entrepreneurs at the highest level, that, that's just not what you just told me about growing up poor. That's entrepreneurial. I mean, I can't tell you how many entrepreneurs at the highest level I talked to that had no money. And uh, my firm is the first company is two billionaires that are clients. And I think six or seven people that are dirt broke but they find a way to make an investment. No excuses, make the investment. Okay, so the key word that you said there in, in that really good, really good example about yourself that really, will be really helpful for your audience is you said the word investment. So normally I don't do this, but I think people will appreciate it. So I started my company, um, you know, zero business background. The first investment I made in a group was maybe $200 a year. It was 200 200. Okay. And then I realized, okay, that's not the group for me, but okay. Made the investment. The next one was 2000 a year. Okay. Starting to find some people that I understand and they understand me. Okay. Then someone in that group told me about strategic coach. They're like, you're not 2000 a year. You're 10,000 a year investment. Okay. Made, made the investment 10,000 a year. At, at the time, that was a little over two years ago. That was a very big investment, but I made the investment. Okay. 10,000 a year investment. Then I'm like, okay, I'm not really the 10,000. I'm going to do the 25,000. So recently did the 25,000. Oh, wow. Big investment. Nah, okay. And then uh, someone in strategic coach told me about abundance 360, which uh, for those who don't know, it is top, you know, one of the top entrepreneur groups in the world. Okay. That's 20 K a year. So, but, but I started at 200. 
started at 200. Now I'm investing in those types of groups, you know, around 50, 60,000 a year. But I didn't start at 50, 60,000 a year. I didn't start at that. I started at 200. I started at 200. And the first check I ever got that said my company's name, Brevik, the first check was $500, $500. So, and I'll tell you, they had, they, they, it was in a, a little restaurant and they printed out the check. They printed out the check and it said my company's name on it. And I actually regret not saving the, when I deposited it during the bank run, I, I regret not saving the receipt because it would have been funny. And uh, I, I, I'll just say, the, the checks I get now are much bigger than $500, but it started at 500 and it started at 200. It didn't start out at 50,000. It didn't start out at 20. It didn't start at that, but you have to start by making the investment because otherwise you're just making an excuse and no excuses, only investment. Well, and you know, if you don't play, you don't win. And, Ooh, for- Ooh, it's- good one. and I think, you know, it's, when I go to Vegas or I went to, I went to the Catskills and I went to a casino in the Catskills a few weeks ago and I was <laughs> only willing to pay the like quarter slots. That was the cheapest they had. Cause I'm oh, nickel no. no, no, no. That's all I feel comfortable with. I'm a nickel slots girl, but they only had quarter slots. Like, this place is high roller in the Catskills. But you know, I know if I would have invested a dollar, five dollars, you know, everybody's always saying <laughs> like $20 slots or whatever. Yes. I would have been much more successful. I didn't win anything. I spent like, <laughs> you know, um, $20. But I knew <laughs> that, you know, I knew the outcome wouldn't be great. But you play right. with as much as you can and then you invest more when you can. More. And yep. After five minutes of talking with you on just a random Zoom where we met in a breakout room, I was like, oh, I am investing in this $25,000 program too. And guys, you know, listeners, we're not telling you to do that. But no, I'm just saying no, no. every time I've taken a big leap, a leap that felt like a pit in my stomach, like three years ago, investing $10,000 in coach felt mm. like for me, we're the same person. Yes, it's paid <laughs> off. So I go a little bit slower than Justin. It's true. I think we all hear that now. But um, <laughs> I recognized, you know, you have to really take the risk to get the reward, whether that means yes. going outside your comfort zone with your day job and saying, I'm going to work nights too, or I'm going to cut back hours, or I'm going to use my vacation to ramp something up in an interesting way. I, I, there's so many ways to make a minimized risk investment in yourself. Man, that's, that's, that's great. And here, here's the beautiful thing. Here's the beautiful thing. Um, I'm, I'm 44. You're definitely younger than that. I'm not going to guess your age or say your age, but you're I'm I'm only sure two you're younger. years younger than that, Justin. Right. So here's the beautiful thing. This is just starting. Our journey's just starting. Our journey's just starting. And um, it, oh, are you getting the birth certificate or something? <laughs> exactly. I want to prove to you. Are you really? Are you really? I'm, no, no. Uh, I just realized <laughs> that my computer came unplugged, which is definitely not a high level oh. thing to be doing on a podcast, but it came unplugged. It's <laughs> um, hilarious. But, and I'm actually almost 43, November. So we're practically the same age, Justin. I'm just more conservative right. than you. <laughs> Well, here, so again, this is just, I mean, it's just started, you, you know, you've been doing this longer, but you, it's just started. Um, it will only keep getting better and better. It will only keep better and better. And again, to your point, the bigger investments that I make, um, the bigger investments that I make, it's usually a hundred. That's why I'm so excited about the new company, because it's just a way bigger investment than what I'm already doing with a partner who can help me do it way better and faster he's nine quick start way better than so that's my point and um again I, i'd actually like to know if you have it um because you're a four fact finder you probably haven't done it but if you have send me your score the uh the print the print have you done that do you know what that is i've never heard of that what is it okay i'll, I'll email it to you uh there's a there's a code for coach members but so print p-r-i-n-t and again anyone can take this it's your unconscious motivators so people see the tip of the iceberg, they don't see um, under the, the water. And um, uh, I'll eight fact finder this, 
10 is the highest fact finder. I'm an eight, so that's pretty high. But um, so my, again, my top three strength finders are activate, maximize, achieve. So there's no overthinking. There's no feeling anything. I don't know. <laughs> I'm 34 out of 34 on empathy and 33 out of 34 on includer. Uh, my business partner, by the way, he's three on empathy. He's very high in it. Um, but I, you know, I just do it. I don't overthink it. I don't feel it. I just execute, execute, execute. And anyway, unconsciously, unconsciously, my print score is eight, three. So my main unconscious motivator is an eight, which is to be strong and self-reliant, which <laughs> might probably yours too, <laughs> probably yours too, based on what I'm hearing. Although unconsciously, it's harder to predict. And then my, my minor unconscious motivator is a three, which is to succeed and achieve. So those scores are all about execution and go for it. It's the go for it mentality. There's a lot of entrepreneurs where unconsciously they're motivated by thinking about things or feeling it, which with how you're talking, my guess is you have one of those numbers, well, at least one of them because you have to think about it. You have to feel it. I don't have to feel or think about anything. I just do it. I just do it unconsciously. And so I'll, I'll send you that after this. I'll email it to you. Um, that, that's what I hear is that maybe that's why it's taking a little longer because you have to feel it or really think about it, which is fine, by the way. I don't. I just execute, 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 execute. Yeah. Well, I think something I'm really taking away from our conversation and something I'm just taking away from, you know, knowing you is that we need to know ourselves. Like I oh, know yes. that my past motivations, my childhood of seeing my mom work in a job she hated or struggled yes. with for people that, you know, didn't uh, understand her full value and not and earning her. what yep. she needed. And then growing yep. up were all translated into me being afraid to take risks, but afraid to work for others. So I was going to make my own way by myself as felt good for me financially. But the way, Justin, Strong and self -reliant. yeah, the way you're sharing how to know ourselves, you know, if you can't tap into your story, if you're not sure where your motivations are coming from, the Colby assessment is a great resource, which we will put in the show notes. He mentioned a print assessment, which I can't wait to print. take. Um, it's and strength finders too. That's a really, are you high in ideation and strength finders? Oh gosh. You, you know? know, I'm low in fact finder. So I did take that one and I have no idea, but I also, <laughs> I also love the disc assessment. That one's really good. You and I, are you and I guess what other one? Maybe some D. I don't, I'm I don't the know highest the other one. ID. I'm right at the top in the middle. Yeah. I'm practically outside the circle. What are you? I'm the highest D with a little I and the other two are totally right. I'm the highest, I'm off the page on D. Right. So that makes perfect. So I already knew. So my brain immediately is da, 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 and then immediately I can just tell. I can just, that's how my brain turns everything into patterns. Everything. Well, and you know what and I love it, about that <laughs> is that not only do you know yourself, right? And that way you can figure out how to go into business for yourself, what leaps feel good for you, why yes. you're doing that, you can understand your motivations, but then you can find like-minded people to partner with yes. because you can know them. You learned my Colby and immediately knew that there would be synergy there. So I just think for people yes. listening, if you've never taken an assessment, there's another great one called the Achiever, which I just love. I'm actually so afraid to take it. I make all my employees take it, but I've never taken it for myself because I can't handle the truth. It is so in depth <laughs> that I actually don't want oh, to man. know these things about myself, but you're making me read. <laughs> so guys, if you're questioning what your next step should be, if you're wondering, how do I even find this out? I love that 30 item list. Maybe don't include yeah. brushing your teeth, but I love <laughs> that item list and circling it. I'm going to be thinking about that as I think about my next steps. And really, I want you guys to check out our show notes, affordableinteriordesign.com slash podcast to check out some of these assessments. It's a very minimal financial investment to learn so much about yourself. Thank you very much. Of course, of course. Well, we'll talk again soon. Okay, see you later. A big thank you to our amazing producer, Catherine Heller, to Aton and the MBCR House Band, and to Affordable Interior Design, the sponsor of this podcast and the premier place to get an amazing look on a budget. Check out affordableinteriordesign.com.
If you guys love the show, the very best way to support us is by spreading the word. Tell your friends or write us an awesome review on iTunes. So until next week, guys, thanks so much for joining us and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.